a better choice because he was just relentlessly pushing top lane. So Alstar Shen Morgana, the bans from Corsair. Uh, Taipei Assassins banning out Graves, Malphite, and Nocturne. And, yeah, uh, and the yeah. surprise is that Taipei Assassins is actually picking up Karthus instead. So, yeah. um, you know, it's it is a different situation. But here's the and thing, though. You also got Urgot was the first oh, God. pick. First that's, pick for Taipei Assassins. And, that's uh, not even fair. Here's the thing, you know, in response to the Urgot, uh, Corsair picked up Vayne, uh, Vayne Janna. Now, we've seen uh, um, you know, Vayne, we've seen her do actually some work. Works well as someone who provides extra movement speed down to bot lane, be it Janna or uh, Nunu with the Blood Boil. But the last pick for uh, Corsair Vayne, is actually... Was Vayne picked before Urgot, though? Immediately after. Oh, after, okay. And, yeah, Urgot was first pick for Taipei Assassins, so after that, they did uh, Vayne Janna. But uh, the last pick for Corsair is actually going to be the Cassiopeia, so we'll see how uh, Cast does in the mid against Karthus. Yeah, that's interesting. I've I've never really seen a Vayne picked into an Urgot. Usually, Urgot is used as a counter pick to Vayne. Um, I mean, Urgot is just an all around strong, uh, you know, AD carry in the bottom lane. Mm. Uh, can shut down the lane, you know, very easily in certain matchups. And then later in the game, uh, you know, you have that shutdown potential, quick kill potential, and that's kind of the issue with Vayne is that Vayne is is of short range AD. Um, her tumble it isn't long enough. It's kind of slow and it's not long enough distance that you can get out of the uh, the arsenal shells or whatever from Urgot, so he's going to be able to get on the lock-on very often. Mm -hmm. uh, Janna works very well against Urgot, so that, that's a nice pick. Janna, with the quick whirlwind, you can cancel Urgot's ultimate, so that's going to be yeah. huge. But um, we'll have to see. I mean, late game, Corsair, what they're really trying to do is just have these tanky teams up front, control the front line, and then, you know, hopefully Anivia and Vayne just absolutely uh, wreck the fights. But then again, you also have uh, Janna Gibby working up uh, very well with uh, a bunch of other champs that the Assassin has uh, to offer, you know, particularly Skarner. Because, yeah. you know, that slow, that tornado can do immense, immense things. But nice notion. Oh, they're the invading the Corsair the is coming right in. Corsair, they had the ward placed by their blue earlier, so they know the assassins are going in for this. But there you go. There's a the world go down. Not going to grab the Skarner, but here comes Mundo from behind the flash away from Skarner. Will they be able to capitalize on his exhaust going down on the Skarner? He is slowed, but he does have the blue buff. Will they be able to catch up? Stun? No. Something. Anything. There's a flash from Cassie Pia trying to get more damage down. The Ignite going down as well. Will Skarner go down? Oh. Yes. First blood. That for Cass, sucks. That's a blue buff in that, the mid at yeah. level one. The uh, the poison, just the one last tick from Artie <laughs> nice. being able to tick it on the Skarner, and that was exactly what they didn't want very, to happen. Very well um, done. The heal going off, Urgot was like, oh, please, survive. But, yeah, so Cassiopeia is a really strong counter pick to Karthus, and... Um, you know, later on in the game, Cassiopeia also works well against uh, frontline teams. Urgot is pretty short range. Aurelia is the frontline champion. Uh, Skarner as well. You just have all this nasty AOE up front. But Car uh, Cassiopeia's laning phase um, is, you know, one of the strongest in the game. Karthus has the range where he can farm from a distance, but even so, if Cassiopeia gets some early wards up and plays aggressively with that blue buff, the constant spam harass could shut Karthus out of that lane early, slow down his farm a little bit. But he should be fine. I mean, Karthus can farm against anyone, but it can still shut him down a little bit. But now you'll also see York. Oh, but Mundo and Janna are both oh, walking into Skarner. They're looking to completely here. shut down Little Balls, and he's very low. The Whirlwind, he will actually be able to get out of they there. They just want to force him out. They just want to get him out of his jungle. They just want to shut him down as quickly as possible. And then Cassiopeia is there again. Another you know, blue just being completely denied to the Assassins here. Yeah, so Skarner really far behind, and uh, really nice job by Corsair recognizing it. So they do have York going in that bottom lane. York, um, you know, is one of those champions that does very well in those one v two situations. That's that's oftentimes the situation you want. He also, you know, can control the lane top, but uh, the one v two is awesome, and then it allows them to shut down Aurelia early. So everything that Corsair is doing right now. Uh, is it's basically working out for them, but they have mid lane can you know to a certain extent slow down Karthus, mm -hmm. uh, kind of shut him down. Top lane they're looking to shut down Stanley, so you know Aurelia late game is going to be nasty, but they can sh uh, shut down his farm early with that aggressive lane. And then Skarner is so far behind, they've you know set him behind. He can't even finish his mini golems. No. He's level two, can't finish the mini golems. That's uh, back. Yeah, he's just their whole team is extremely far behind right now. Wonderful, wonderful notions from Corsair coming in. You know, they're they're proving you know that they're here to play. They're definitely a top team in this tournament. They definitely deserve to be in this grand finals because of this fantastic, fantastic coordination and the and their game plan here too. So we'll see how the vein works top lane against the Aurelia with the Janna and uh, York for the time being. Though he's doing, uh, he's actually he's doing okay. Yeah, and uh, Urgot in that lane, 
Um, it's an aggressive lane against an AD, yeah. but against York, they just don't have enough damage to take him down. Yeah, so but, York yeah. can, you know, sustain in that lane. He's going to be fine. But you know, um, in comparison, though, to Aurelia, also yeah, in a right. 1v2 situation, Aurelia is actually still managing to get decent farm. Yeah, uh, I'm actually right surprised to see that Stanley's ahead of uh, Urgot right now, that, yeah. or York right now. That's a little, it is a little odd, but, you know, because York can, you know, he's, he's a little bit safer farming from the distance. He can throw down those ghouls, but I think he's just having a little bit of trouble farming under towers. I think the, the pressure... Because that's the thing, though. You have Tarek here down bottom. Oh, but Mundo is actually tower diving top. Vayne and uh, uh, Wajana, they have it. The condemned here. against the wall. Mundo. But there's a teleport in from Karthus, so they can maybe turn this around. Fortunately, Mundo not taking any turret damage, but he is actually going down very quickly. Wow. And then Karthus might have enough mana, just barely not enough to chase him down. Cassiopeia, Cassiopeia. that was a little bit of an odd, uh, oh, odd one more entrance Q. there from the back. But Karthus didn't have enough mana. That was, I, that was a little odd. Like Cassius like came in like right through the back, right through the back tri brush. That's kind of like you don't really have a whole lot of business being here. The fight's over. Yeah, and a complete turnaround for Taipei Assassins now. So having the double buff on Aurelia is just so painful for them. Uh, Aurelia has a level advantage as well. Once Aurelia hits six in particular, um, you know she can just easily two v one. She's just going to dive right on top of Vayne whenever Vayne tries to harass her, and then you know Vayne has to just get out of there. So. Uh, I don't know, just a really nice job from them. Mundo trying to abuse them, trying to pick up those kills, and then the, the turnaround from Taipei Assassins. And it's, I don't know, it's going to be tough. Skarner, he's, you know, still really far behind. But that's not that big of a deal. Skarner doesn't need that much farm. Once he hits six, um, you know, that's going to be really deadly for them, particularly in that bottom lane. The Urgot swap into the Skarner ult is going to be terrifying. And then if you consider uh, if Vayne starts swapping back to the bottom lane, so it's Urgot versus Vayne again, then, you know, those are going to be easy kills for them. Yeah, York's still sticking it out. Bot lane, though, he's still considerably far behind his uh, what uh, originally would have been his uh, lane opponent. But there you go, the stun, the Taric Urgot combo with the acid. That could be huge. He's already he just got back to lane. He just got back and he's half health. That sucks. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely uh, pretty painful. And I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't, you know, gotten armor. So I, I kind of would have expected against the Terrak and Urgot to start off with the cloth armor and, you know, five health class. Yeah. He started off with the boots, which is fine. It allows him to move around a little bit more, but then not getting it because he wants to be able to get that philosopher. So that's fine. Well, yeah. um, you well, know, he wants that ability. Well, I think, though, you know, with the with the story behind the boots, you should be evasive enough to try and get out of the range in ter of Terrak to evade yeah, those stuns. No, yeah. But it's not it's not happening. Yeah, but in the meantime, Skarner has been setting up top lane, so he definitely wants to get a kill up here uh, with uh, Aurelia since, uh, actually, he's going to back off. So Aurelia you know, has enough pressure to control the lane. Uh, actually, Cassiopeia coming down bot, though, hiding in the bush, trying to base something out. Yorick is there, just you know, grabbing the stun, trying to lure the assassins out, but I don't think it's going to be working, though. The lane is pushing a little bit too much. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, how this kind of progresses. Skarner again coming up in the top lane. So what he's looking for is Vayne to just harass Aurelia at all. Then Aurelia can dive onto them and they can you know come and pick up the kill. Uh, there, there it goes. Go. The blade surge onto a minion and then onto Vayne. No, just not quite. So uh, Aurelia couldn't kill the minion with the uh, the Q, so it didn't get the follow-up. Well, Mundo is making his way on up, though, recognizing that Skarner was in top lane. He's going to have to get out of there somehow. And are they going to meet wards going down both by the blue buff? And Stanley's there over the wall, getting the surge down onto Vayne. Uh, Condemn into the wall. Stanley will be stunned. Popping the ult just for a little bit extra harass, but uh, it's not going to get a whole lot there. Yeah, so they do have control of this blue, though, and that's the big thing. They're going to be able to shut down Karthus a little bit. Uh, they have Mundo and Cassiopeia coming in. Again, some nice harass from Bebe in that bottom lane. They're in complete control of that lane, but if they can slow down Karthus, that oh, could be huge, Skarner's but Skarner... Skarner's in, in trouble here, though. He does have the flash, does flash over the wall. That's fine. You forced it out. He's not going to have that for those later ganks. Yeah, and so Karthus going to farm the um, you know minions. He's going to be fine. He's going to farm the race there. But uh, yeah, if, if Cassiopeia, if they can start putting on this pressure again, they do have really nice dragon control with Cassiopeia, mm. so they can you know force a fight at dragon, uh, take it pretty quickly, and you know just build on their gold lead. And then if Bane farms, that's the big thing. Bane needs to farm very uh, successfully. Um, then you know their late game will be very strong, and they'll have a strong mid game as well. But uh, Taipei Assassins, they're just so strong right now. The stun from Tarek, actually There's they get the, the Urgot swap the also. Swap. There you go, York is in a little bit of trouble here. There goes the Karthus ult as well for the Garen. Oh, one Garen's more attack. Flash, auto attack, done. Nice kill for the Assassins down bot. And that is just absolute abuse right now. So I think, you know, is, is it around this point where you start considering to switch back? 
Oh, well, the issue is that if they switch back, then Vayne's well, going to be in, in for a world of hurt. And yeah. The tower is down, so as a result, Yorick, he can freeze the lane, so he's going to be fine. Um, the only reason to consider the switch, switch back is if Vayne can't farm against Aurelia, and mm. that's not the issue right here. Uh, Vayne should be fine with farming, it's just that Aurelia is also going to be farming, so they're going to have to deal with the late game presence. And uh, Aurelia and Urgot shuts down Vayne so hard. Like, both of them are, you know, almost specifically designed to shut down, you know, well, they are designed to shut down short range AD carries, so it's it's going to be kind of difficult for them. Um, you know, we'll see how that works. Mundo coming up, not going to quite catch him out. And actually, oh, if they they don't have a ward there, but they do ping. They, they ping. They ping Mundo, so that is definitely a sign. It is like, hey, everyone's top lane. It could be not a good opportunity to go grab the dragon if we're available. But I don't think uh, assassins are quite in a position to do so. But Urgot's coming on. They're around. moving for it though. Around. Yeah, I think they're actually going to go for it here. Yeah, so they are going to be able to pick this up, and Karthus has enough. Uh, uh, damage for Dragon as well. So they're going to get this pretty easily. And Corsair not defending at all. So not yeah. a lot of ward coverage around um, you know, Dragon uh, for most of this game. There isn't any currently, but they're able to pick that up. And the big thing is Scar Scarter, almost level 6. So 11 minutes in, he's still only level 5. He was really set far behind, but mm. he's almost there. So once he hits 6, uh, that's a you know monumental occasion for TPA. They can all cheer and you know be happy. But here's the thing that I've uh, really started to notice, though, with uh, especially with uh, Cassiopeia, because you've seen Cass actually have a presence in both top and bot lane for not a whole lot of return. And for all of that time, Karthus Toys, he's just staying in the mid lane. He's just sticking around farming. And at this point, he's actually got a full level lead in, in terms of experience on Cassiopeia in all that time that she's been, that she's been wasting. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely a nice situation, but not really that, you know, concerning. Cassiopeia still wins in fights, but they do have a 4v2 up in this top lane, and so actually, Whirlwind, no, can we get it? The slow, there's and the slow. there's the Whirlwind. Cassiopeia coming in from behind, so they're going to want to push them into the tower, but Mundo is one of the strongest uh, tanks in the game in for yep. early tower diving. He can tank too. with his ult very easily. His ult is up, but uh, I don't think they're actually going to be going in on this, actually. Uh, Mundo and Cass actually retreating back to the mid, to see if they can to clear that creep wave. And also, you know, Aurelia is also screwing around in enemy territory as well. I think she might actually be uh, transitioning down. Yeah, so here's so here's a, here's the forced swap here from the Assassin. So, uh, you know, Urgot's already got a huge advantage after getting those kills down onto uh, York down bot along with the tower. So he's going to go ahead come up here and uh, abuse Vayne a little bit. Yeah, and Aurelia has a huge advantage as well. So yeah. Yorick beats Aurelia in the early levels, but at this point, Aurelia just crushes him. So there's no options there, but Urgot actually swapping in on Vayne. The Karthus ultimate as well. One more attack can maybe do it. There's, there's the ultimate, go. able to pick it up. So nice job. And that's the issue with Urgot versus Vayne, is Urgot, every single time the ult is up, is just going to walk up, swap with Vayne, and pick up the kill. Yeah, every well, every time the ult is up, he's getting a kill pretty much period, I yeah, think. Right. So, so yeah, the assassins, they have the but comp definitely to TPA, go TPA, they are positioning for this blue, and they are going to try and steal it. Aurelia coming in pretty aggressively. They are able to steal it. Karthus actually got it. So yeah. Karthus stealing it over the wall. Um, you know, really nice job. Very well done. Mundo running back and forth in front of the turret with the ult on. He just needs to go ahead and get back some of that health. The the push from the assassins top lane is just way too strong in a moment. Stun going down. The extra harass and the three pointers coming in from Urgot as well for his even more damage. Now granted, Mundo, he's got his heart of gold. He's got he's got another ruby crystal. He's got health, but uh, armor wise, can only do so much against the brutalizer right now being built on Urgot. Yeah, and uh, I think Mundo is kind of a big hope for Corsair because, um, you know, TPA, th their damage, it might be kind of difficult for them to take down uh, Mundo, but he is going to be walking right into uh, uh, Karthus. And then also because Aurelia is doing a pretty decent job, it's, it's going to yeah. be kind of a scary prospect. But we'll, we'll have to see. Um, you know, the Yorick, he's kind of always an X factor. How, how much control they can give to Vayne. If Vayne can survive through the fights with the Yorick ultimate, then they should be able to win the fights. But... TPA, they just have so many means of initiating on the back line into Vayne and just completely shutting down Vayne. That's going to be pretty difficult. And then, you know, if those front lines, uh, you know, go down, Karthus can just come in as well and have the AoE to clear out everything. And even then, even if you, you can just also just run straight on in, suicide, and there's plenty of there's plenty of damage to go around because also remember Corsair, they're a very close quarters team. Vayne doesn't have really a whole lot of range. Cassie PFG wants to get most of her damage. She has to get pretty close. York melee, Mundo yep. melee. 
Oh, it's also going to be an issue how tanky TPA is going to be. So Karthus, you know, if you kill Karthus, then he's just going to have his passive. But Urgot and Skarner and Aurelia, they're all extremely yeah. tanky. You don't, there's no, you know, real squishy where you're like, focus this person down and then we win a fight. So Corsair, they could, you know, throw out a monumental effort to take down someone like Karthus and then lose the fight anyway because they don't have enough damage to take out uh, the Urgot and Skarner. Again, Cassiopeia leaving mid to try and make something happen down bot. They did get the tower, but now Karthus is actually edged out a two-level lead in all the time that uh, Cass has been out on vacation. So Karthus is getting more and more money, more and more fed, more and more experience. This Oh, but this they might actually come here. in for Vayne once again, just going to be getting some harass. And you know, the, the issue is that Vayne is completely shut out of this lane. There's the Brutalizer, and with the <laughs> cooldown reduction, actually hitting four procs wow. on the Q. And that's always a, a nice point in time when Urgot, you get the cooldown reduction. Instead of hitting only three procs, you get four. Yeah, Brutalizer and Glacial Shroud now, so even more CDR on Urgot. It's, 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 it's not pleasant. How much total does he have? He's 35% nearly. He's nearly maxed out yeah. already. Yeah, and that's, that's the whole point of the Urgot build, is you just have the cooldown reduction to just get off all this damage and be extremely tanky, and actually Skarner coming up in the oh, top Mundo's lane. Mundo's in a Mundo. bad spot right now. He does get in impaled. There's Urgot. There's a stun coming from Tarek as well. The Monsoon can only do so much, and there's the swap back up. Can the damage happen? There's the flash over the wall. There you go. Double kill for Urgot. And that's, Mundo is just a little bit uh, little bit out of position there. Their quick pickoff potential is just so strong right now. It's going to be so difficult for Corsair to deal with it. Corsair, they need to have, you know, just controlled team fights. But TPA, uh, they can win, you know, these lane situations. And they're going to just take complete control of this game right now. So, you know, we'll see how Corsair can kind of turn this around. But... Um, the issue is that Urgot is he, Urgot and Norelli are both at that point. Urgot, in particular, is at that point where he's just able to just shut down uh, games, and that's yeah. Urgot's mid game is just so phenomenally strong, and his late game's you know pretty strong as well with how unkillable he can become. Urgot's farmed, Karthus is farmed. He's got plenty of gold on him. Aurelia didn't have a fine time. Yeah, pretty much everyone from the assassins is just you know they the lanes just kind of really just went everyone's way. Yeah, so we'll see what Corsair can do to hold off. Um, you know, the double uh, gold per 10 on Yorick, he should be okay. Mundo coming up, trying to see if they can pick someone off, yeah. but they're going to be able to get out of their fine. So it's actually a nice play from Corsair. They can take this tower if they decide to push it pretty aggressively. And, you know, these towers and map patrols and whatnot, that'll help them get back into this game. Yeah. I mean, Corsair, what they, the only strategy they have really going for them right now is that they can assemble as a four-man yeah. push and actually but just muscle out these objectives. They are losing Dragon, though, as yeah. a result. It's not They couldn't really defend Dragon anyway. They're going to lose it regardless. But um, we'll see. Actually, Bebe might be able to shut down this push, almost taking down Vayne. A couple of shots, the you know, Janus shield able to keep her up. But, you know, once the creep wave does come on back, and now Cassie P has joined the party too. So this is a five-man push here, top lane against two. But, you know, Karthus, he's been farming. Skarner and Aralia, they've been farming. They've been pushing the other objectives. And so much effort in order to just take a tier one tower out. And Mundo's hungry. He's trying to go get that slow, get those kills. But uh, in retreat, York will actually take a, a bit of the acid, uh, take a, a free shot or two. They managed to take the tier one, but tier two in mid and tier two and bot are actually in grave danger. Pings going down from the assassins down onto the barren area. Mistake may actually be caught out here. There goes the exhaust down onto the Tarek. There is enough damage there to go ahead and take him out Kadem against the wall. Nice kill from Corsair. Yeah, but as a result, like you said, Aurelia is going to be able to pressure that tier two, uh, tier two turret. And, um, you know, with the all, Aurelia can clear the waves pretty easily. Oh, Karthus, he's just waiting. He's waiting. He knows the Corsair is going to Wow, that's an extremely it. aggressive Baron. I, yeah. Though I think right now, though, Corsair, they're a little bit desperate at this point. They yeah. know they're behind. Well, they also they know Aurelia is back. They know or at yeah. the base, and they know a couple of the members are back. So they can pressure it so and take it pretty easily. Out, I was on the Tier 2 in bot does finally go down, but Baron is not going down as quickly as Corsair. 2,000, it's really close. Corsair Toys is right there in the middle of the pit, though. He does have the AoE. Will he be able to steal it? No! Oh, yeah, he's going to be able to steal it now while he's dead. Yeah, no, he's he, actually regenning, so he's not getting yeah, damage so. on it. That's a shame. But even so, able to stop it completely, pick up a kill, and then chase them down. Yeah. Uh, Skarner and Urgot want to grab someone, but the tier two is down. Aurelia was able to She's grab it. Going. And then in the base. She's still going. Yeah, and that's just complete control for TPA <laughs> right now. Uh, Corsair, you know, it was a nice thought. I, 
I think they really needed the Cassiopeia damage there. And Cassiopeia moved out to zone Karthus. Yeah. Um, but Cassiopeia just is so much of their damage towards Baron that without it, they just weren't able to kill it fast enough. They got it down to like 1,000 HP. I mean, they almost it had it. It was, it was really extremely close. close. But uh, yeah, lesson also learned today that uh, if Karthus is low in the pit, his, uh, his ghost doesn't count as a person. So uh, Baron just goes ahead and starts regenning from there. Yeah, I thought it did, which is what surprises me, but um, I guess not. Yeah. I, I thought that it, it maybe it was just because he wasn't, you know, damaging it. He may have might have turned off his E, but yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Yeah. Like the moment, the moment, uh, the moment there's not a single champion actually engaging on the Baron, he does actually like disengage from combat, starts regening his health pretty quickly as well. But uh, yeah, Karthus in the pit when he's dead just doesn't count there. So. But still, though, assassins are in a pretty dominant position. They stopped the uh, they stopped the desperate Baron attempt, and that was really Corsair's only shot at yeah. even really grabbing that you know, that transition with Aurelia away. I, they're not going to get an opportunity like that again anytime soon, unfortunately, because now the pushes are continuing, and that you know Yorick has to be bot lane. He has to go ahead and defend that because the tier three is at, at half health already. Um, it's yeah, they have to be in defensive mode right now. Yeah, they, they never really even had a fight with uh, Cassiopeia and, you know, Janna and Bane and whatnot. But uh, TPA, they have the Oracles. They are actually going for this. So Karthus, you know, has plenty of damage. Yorick is bottom. Uh, no Aurelia is pushing that bottom lane, and they have no vision, so they're just going to rush it. They're like, anything you can do, we can Here do better. The Janna, swap there's Janna. a ward. Okay, now Janna knows. Now Corsair knows where they've been. But uh, baby, right over the wall. Man, should get that kill down onto Janna. Pretty easy with some help from Karthus. Flash over the wall, back into the Baron pit. Baron goes down to half, but he Assassins will disengage because they know that uh, the rest of Corsair is here trying to defend it. Aurelia, Stanley still bot lane, still pushing, putting York out of the fight. Yeah, and Baron's high enough that you know they couldn't really pressure it. They probably would have gone down, but they're able to move in. Um, you know, they with Janna down, they could probably take this tier two turret. Urgot well, actually chasing him down with the slow. Very huge yeah. damage coming from Urgot. And now if anyone walks up, then Taipei Assassins with the uh, Karthus, they can control the front line with the yep. wall very easily and, you know, protect uh, their damage. But then also, you know, they can chase people down very easily. Skarner can run in, pick up a kill. Uh, Urgot's always, or Vayne's always going to be in dangerous situation. Actually, they're still chasing after toys, though, and he does he have enough slow. The he will go down. Is down on him. He does have the AoE up, though, but the rest of the Assassins are here to fight this. And Mundo actually is the first one to go down. Karthus is down, but there's the AoE. There's the ultimate as well. I wonder if he's going to be getting anything off of that. York Ghoul going down onto Vayne, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot there. Double kill for Aurelia, cleaning up the Cassie Pit, and now Just Janna. Just a couple of seconds until retreat. another Q. Where's the stun? There you go. Slow. That's, there you go. Just nice clean up there. The Assassins with an ace. One for five. Should be able to take out this tier three in mid. Plus an inhib. They might even be able to take down the, the tier three in bot as well. Finish that business. Yeah, so they can take down the uh, the mid turret. Um, Stanley just barely not able oh, to grab, so will back off. But it is very low. The next push that they decide to make as a team, yeah. uh, they can do it. Cassiopeia can stall uh, waves pretty easily along with Janna. You know, it's going to be tough for them to engage underneath the turret. But um, you know, they they can get that top turret. They'll probably transition up to top after they go back and buy, and then you know, transition to mid, take mid, take bottom. Yep. So right now, the assassins are doing the safe play. They're backing off. They're going back. They're buying. Just realizing now that Karthus actually has a Magi's on him. That's just that's just rude. But uh, Aurelia getting the ult down on the Mundo. He does pop the ult. He may actually even go down here, but the rest of Corsair is here to fight off the Aurelia. Poison going down from Cast. Putting down a little bit extra damage, but Corsair will secure their own red, it seems. Yeah, and just barely not able to pick up the kill, but yeah. Aurelia able to get out of there, so you know that's always a bonus. Um Skarner still is the or the Oracle, so he's going to be just clearing out those wards, yep. and they can pressure Baron again, force another fight. Karthus, uh, Karthus did buy that Mage Ice. He's at seven stacks right now. You break even at six, so everything from here on in is profit. But uh, you've been seeing him uh, suicide in, but he's he's making the returns on the investment anyway still. Yeah, but but uh, wards going down. Bottom. There's a swap real quick down on the Mundo in the middle of the pit. They know his ult is gone. They know he's going to go down pretty quick. And... Urgot just walks on out very casually. He's still full health. He's still they, full they didn't health. Capitalize it on it at all. Uh, he was just completely, Urgot you know, ignored. Tr he's trying to get away from some harass, but there you go. Cassiopeia gets in a little bit too deep, but does get ulted by the uh, York. So he's gonna be sticking around for a little bit while longer. Oh, There's Cassiopeia Jana with the, the steal. Ult. 
Nice, very well done from Cass. Getting it on in, getting the Baron Seal, but the thing is, though, I don't think they're going to be able to do a well, whole Vayne, lot with it. They are because Vayne oh. is completely alive, so they're fine. They win the fight. Cassiopeia with the Ghoul Steal and nice. York trying to chase in, but actually they turn onto Urgot. If they can get in range, Cassiopeia or Vayne just barely can the in range. Shield do something? The no. shutdown. Wow. So the uh, Cassipia, oh well, actually Skarner's going to go down as well. Oh, the oh, teleport here comes in from Karthus, Karthus. though. Karthus, he comes with the teleport in. Skarner does go down, but uh, Toys may actually be able to make something happen here. He does manage to get the kill down onto Vayne. Will he be able to kill the York before going down himself? Yes, double wow. kill on the Toys. Forty health he got down to. Yeah, TPA really needed that to happen. The alt trying to pick off the Janna. Yes. yes. And so he's got to get out of there. Mundo is chasing is down. Oh, he's going to go down, though. Mundo coming in from behind will easily be able to pick up this kill. The creep wave is almost gone. There you go, Cleaver. Easy. Yeah. But the big thing was, Baron's uh, gone. you know, Baron is gone. Um, TPA, they really needed that to happen. So they were way ahead in this game. Yeah. But if, you know, after that fight, uh, Vayne was extremely strong. With that Baron buff, they would have been able to stall uh, stall for quite some time and maybe even come back into this game. So Cassiopeia, she was Yorick ulted, walked up, stole the Baron while Yorick was, uh, or while um, Urgot was trying to take it down. And uh, then they were able to win that fight. So really nice job. Uh, and actually, Tarek, mistake, oh, getting the caught oracles. out. The Oracles is going to be going down here, unfortunately. I still love the Toys play. Teleporting in after oh, yeah. the fight, uh, it's kind of like the Revive Teleport Karthus, <laughs> except minus the Revive, but still teleporting in to shut them <laughs> down, get the double kill. He had plenty of time to fight. Triple kill, launch. actually. Yeah, really well done. Really well done. And he's also, that's the thing, too, is Karthus is still continuously getting more and more and more farm as the game goes on. He's nearly at 11k at the moment. That's a lot of AP. That's a lot of damage. He's got his Zonias. He's got a Mage Eyes. He's got a Rod. <laughs> Needlessly large Rod gonna be built into a Death Cap soon. He's getting ridiculously. He's getting ridiculous. Period. Yeah. So Karthus able to come up, take that blue. Um, you know they did lose the fight, but it, they are still way ahead right now, and they still uh, you know can shut down Vayne pretty easily in fights. So that's still a serious concern for Corsair. The fact that if they can you know engage a fight onto Vayne, then they're going to lose. But uh, unfortunately, your work DCing. Hopefully, he gets back shortly. But um, yeah, if they can engage on Vayne, then their Corsair is going to lose. But in that last fight, Vayne, there was no pressure in her face. They were all kind of split. Vayne was able to you know live through the longer fight, and as a result, they're able to turn it around. That's that's what Corsair needs. They need Vayne to just live, basically. Yeah, and even then, you know, granted, yeah, York did actually, you know, good call down to, on the Cassiopeia, ulting her to go ahead and grab that, uh, grab the Baron. But usually, for the York ult, your target wants to be your friendly AD, so you have that much more auto attack damage available to you. So hopefully, we'll be seeing that in the fights if York does come back. Yeah, I mean, it's fine on Cassiopeia, though, too. Both yeah. Cassiopeia uh, and Vayne are good targets as long as it procs. If, it, if the ghoul. If the uh, York alt doesn't proc, if Cassiopeia doesn't die, then it's a waste. But if it does, then Cassiopeia can still get off a lot of damage. Right. Um, you know, so that's that's fine. And Cassiopeia, late game, the damage is so phenomenal. Uh, the longer Cassiopeia lives through fights is also a big issue. But actually, they're walking in. And the tower was extremely low. They're just going to bull rush it. They take it there very easily. And the exposed inhibitor should go down as well without much of a fight. There you go. The inhib should be going down shortly. Of course, there. They're still uh, there. So it's a four v five. They can't really do a whole lot about this. And the assassins will swoop on in, take that, and next target going to be tier two up here top lane. The wave is sufficiently pushed. Then go ahead and get on this, and they should be able to snipe this one out pretty quickly as well. Cassiopeia yeah, in the mid, though, farming and uh, top lane Corsair. There's, they already know what's going to happen. They're setting up to defend a tier three. And regardless of whether or not York was here, uh, TPA had enough of a lead, and the tower was low enough. They could have just bull rushed it anyway. But as a result, unfortunately, Corsair, they can't you know defend it. So um, you know we'll, we'll have to see what's going to happen this game but with the inhibitor down you know they can just put exert their presence around the map very easily and uh with no york alt for uh vein that could be really difficult so now it's just an objective I'm curious if if Tarek, if mistake actually dc to just be like you know we'll, we'll give we'll you one even. But, um, <laughs> i don't know we'll have to see so in the meantime though this is the uh, objective grabbing uh game for the assassins until baron comes on back up okay york is back so we should have a should we should have a nice on fight coming up next when the Baron does decide to respawn. But in the meantime, though, of course, they're getting whatever objectives they can. In the meantime, nice ward placement as well from Janna. Got the Oracles. Want to clean up your own forest? 
don't no no littering of wards here because they know uh, they know as well that these are pretty common ward areas if uh if, if the assassins want to go in and start engaging for baron once again so you might as well go ahead clear see if you're warded see if you're sought you see if you're seen out yeah, but if uh, Type A Assassins, if they get some ward coverage over by the Baron in the top jungle, they can just move right into the bottom lane and force the bottom turret and just mm. walk up, bull rush it again because it is also yep. extremely low. Stanley's been and, doing a pretty good push on it. Right, so they can uh, bull rush it. It will be low. And uh, then if Corsair tries to go for the Baron, TPA could just end the game, or they could just decide to split push Stanley and then allow the rest of the team you know, to put some pressure on top lane or put some pressure on that Baron. But it seems yep. like they're transi transitioning bottom. Urgot and Scar are actually getting in position here. They've stolen the uh, the wolves as well. So they're sticking around the forest. They're sticking close by to Aurelia just in case things go bad, just in case things go wrong. Swap over the wall could actually be pretty disastrous. Uh, seems like Dragon should also be coming up in uh, just a few minutes as well. So something else to be grabbing conveniently enough. But yeah, looking to just push out as many lanes as possible. Karthus in the mid, and now uh, Skarner and Urgot down bot. Yeah, so we'll see uh, if Corsair can hold off. They do have some good, you know, counter pushing with Cassiopeia. Unfortunately, Mundo being down <laughs> and Mistake coming back up. So, um, you know, we'll see what kind of happens. But without Mundo, there's not really any hope of Corsair being able to defend at this point in time, being down this much and then missing out on their frontline tank. Still, though, the push does continue for the Assassins and, uh, you know, you I need think Mundo. You it need seems Mundo. like TPA. I think they're just stalling right now. They're just like, all yeah. right, we'll just sit back for a second. So killing, killing time for Baron. I, you know, I guess this is being played on normal, so there is no, uh, there was no pause feature at this point in time. But um, yeah, just just sitting back. They're you know yeah. they're fine. Yeah, it's killing time for Baron, but also I guess hopefully giving Corsair an opportunity to get their members back. Yep. So Mystic out in front rebought the oracles that he lost earlier to that uh, disastrous kill over by a uh, dragon. They could earlier. easily just end the game right now. So it's they really could. just TPA, you know, show of respect for their opponents. Yep. So just also, you know, killing time, waiting for the Baron to come back up. Assassins going through Corsair's jungle, taking all the remaining objectives as they respawn. But uh, you know, we were mentioning the last fight too. Vayne is going to be like you know one of the uh, the few bastions of hope here for Corsair. Getting the QSS going to be a little bit safer in those fights. You know, if you're gonna get stunned, you need to. Be, Vayne needs to be present, period. But assassins, they uh, they're in a pretty good spot. They have all the ward coverage they need. They can go ahead and start up on this Baron. Yeah, and whether or not members of Corsair were there, they would have taken the Baron. So, yeah. um, you know, that's Real that's quick. not that big of a deal. They're able to you know just drop it incredibly uh, quickly. Um, yeah, at this point, we'll see whether or not they still hold off or if they just kind of push in. They are incredibly strong right now. It would be almost impossible for Corsair yep. to defend. Yep, Corsair, they, they, want, they run into mid. They see the Assassins with the Baron, just the big nope, and just walk right back into the base. It's like, we do not want to deal with that unless there is a tower present. And uh, unfortunately, though, there is going to be a split push here. It looks like uh, Karthus and Tarek are actually wandering down bot to take care of this wave. But you also see top lane. You have Stanley Yana Aurelia looking to push top here. So, oh, Mundo's back. Hopefully something can happen. There we Jana go. got really low, I think, from a, a quick Urgot snipe out. Yeah, probably. But um, Aurelia top will put some pressure up there. And actually, Vayne going to counter push uh, Aurelia. So as a result, they will be able to take this tower pretty easily. How low is it? It's it's Oh, it does go down. So um, there you go. They're able to pick up that turret. And the exposed inhibitor, they should be able to grab that as well. But Vayne has come down the bottom. So they will wait for Aurelia to get up there. Top uh, tier three is actually full. The mid inhibitor is actually respawned in the meantime. Mundo popping the ult, wants to make something happen here, but there you go, Vayne popping the ult, but Cassiopeia going down immediately in the fight. There's the swaps, Jenna being going next, uh, there's Vayne. How much damage can you do in this fight? Unfortunately, not, much. not enough. York is there, double kill for Skarner, and yeah. Vayne was ulted by York, but there's only so much that you can do on your own. Against yeah. the uh, five, I guess a five-man push with Baron and Fortune. I think this is actually going to be game. They're just so powerful, and they're able to easily overpower them. So moving in, they will be able to grab this Nexus 2-0 for Taipei Assassins. And you know what that means, AJ? They're going to be coming to IPL5. They are going to be coming to IPL5. So, Good yeah, stuff. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably heard that uh, before. But, you know, there it is. Yeah. TPA, Taiwan uh, Qualifier Champions. They will be at IPL5. I'm really excited to see it. Very, very well done. And you know, I mean, I'll 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 admit, so most of these you know most of these uh most of these games for uh, these qualifiers uh, for Ty for uh, actually pretty much everything for Taiwan. Yeah. Um. You know, we've been running off of replays. Unfortunately, I mean, I was I was spoiled on like Saturday. I'm like, oh, they won. I'm like, 
Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. It was, like, on the front page of Reddit. Yeah, it was, like, on yeah. the front page of Reddit. I'm like, damn it, damn it, damn it. I wanted it to be a surprise. But that's the thing, though, is how did they get there? Yeah. And I didn't think that the grand final well, was going to be I this also much didn't of a know, blowout. Yeah, I also didn't know. Right. They, uh, we didn't know that, of course, uh, TPA was just going to walk all over yeah. uh, their opponents. So. Um, yeah, really nice job. Really impressive play from TPA. Yeah. It will be exciting to see. They've, they've been in some foreign tournaments recently. Mm. Um, you know, there are server issues whenever you do that, when you yeah. play for North American or whatever tournaments. Yeah. And they haven't really done that well. So, they, you know, they've had some issues. But a lot of it, I'm, I'm sure, you know, can be dealt with, like server ping and um, inexperience with the current foreign scene. So we'll, yeah. we'll see, or with the, I guess, North American scene, we'll see how TPA, you know, kind of adjusts with time but to again, that kind of play. There have always, you know, there are always a lot of those teams though in a lot of different regions where they really excel against teams in their own region but the moment they go international things start to fall apart yeah. like the like the old against all authority kind of comes to mind immediately like they just got crushed at IPL4 because yeah. you know, they perform well in Europe but internationally yeah, and they, yeah. they know the teams that they're playing against and uh, whatnot. We'll have to see. I think, you know, TPA, um, you know, a number of them, they uh, a number of the Asian teams in particular, they play on the NA servers. So yeah. a lot of them, they it's a little bit easier for, uh, I think, Asian uh, transitioning to NA as opposed to EU transitioning to NA because they don't play that often. Um, whereas a lot of the Asian scene and, like, Koreans and whatnot, they've just been playing on the NA servers forever. Right. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that kind of factors in. But regardless, it will be exciting to see them. And, uh, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully, yeah. I don't know that they can give a good showing. I'm also really excited. We will have a number of Asian teams at IPL Faceoff, which is still, you know, just around the corner. Yep. Uh, should be shortly. IGN.com slash IPL. Or will be shortly. Buy your tickets if you haven't done so already. Big red button there. It says buy tickets here. And uh, also, if you're interested as well, go to our Facebook right now. Still running a contest for free $10 RP cards. Do please go to our Facebook at IGN Pro League. Go ahead and enter that as well. Stick around tonight. Also, our last NA show match of the week. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an interesting one. This is going to be a good one. I think you might want to come by for this one. It's going to be Team Dynamic versus Team Marn, the League Pedia runback. Actually, there, during the League Pedia Invitational, uh, Dynamic actually won two one. So Marn was actually able to take a round off these guys. Wow, that's so. impressive. I, I think that in and of itself is uh, interesting. But, uh, you know, Dynamic, they have a yeah. new jungler. So yeah. we'll, we'll see, you know, how Marn can do. Um, based on what I know of their play and, you know, from playing with uh, Marn a little bit, uh, I know that it, it will be exciting. Like, what they're going yeah. to bring to the table, they're going to bring really aggressive uh, champions, lots of assassins and whatnot. I, I know for, it's going to be fun. Yeah. You know, whenever Team Martin's involved, it's going to be a fun, interesting night. But uh, for now, though, I think we're pretty much done. Thank you for joining us for the uh, Taiwan IPL 5 qualifiers. We will be uh, we'll be also you know, running more events next week to see uh, the remaining qualifying spots. Who's going to grab those? Still got two more spots open for NA. Still got two more sp uh, spots open for EU. It's going to be interesting. You got uh, to see who else is going to be coming by. But until then, I think we're pretty much done here. So, hey, we will see you all next time.